Hello everyone, so today I'm going to have a little play around with some makeup. But considering we're coming up to Halloween, I thought I'd have a little play with some Halloween inspired makeup looks. I've never tried to do Halloween makeup before, so I can't promise it's going to be anything special. But we'll see how it goes. I'm going to be copying off a few photos and get ideas from bits of different ones and then put my own twist on it. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know how this video is going to turn out, but I'm going to give it a shot. So the first look I'm going to try and do today it's gonna I'm gonna try and do half of my face normal and then half of it kind of like a skull inspired look so I'm gonna quickly jump off camera and do my foundation and then I'll be right back look like a ghost so what I've done is on this side of my face I've just put on my normal foundation which will be the side that will be the normal face and on this side I've just done a whole lot of my really light concealer because my light foundation wasn't coming out of the bottle so I couldn't use it I think it's better to use this because it makes me look a little bit more flat and dead. So I'm just going to start with my normal side and just do my makeup how I normally would and just add some lipstick. So I'll, I'll do that now. First I'm going in with my Hoola by Benefit Bronzer to contour my cheekbone and my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer to give me some colour and a glow. After that I'm putting some of the Instain Blush from the Balm in the shade Houndstooth onto the apples of my cheeks. Here I'm using my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle on the tops of my cheekbones and on my brow bone. I'm then going in with the shade Pinkity Drinkity from my Morphe and James Charles palette all over my lid. Next, using the same palette, I'm starting to pack on the shade Skip, which is the hot pink colour. I'm wanting this colour to really stand out, so I'm using my finger to pick up more of the pigment to make it really pop. Lots of blending helps this part so that the edge blends seamlessly and doesn't look too patchy. I'm also wanting this to look not perfect, which is why I'm not being too precise when I go in to do my lower lash line. To highlight my inner corner, I'm using the shade Ring White from the same palette, which is the lightest off-white highlight shade. Using my Mecca Max Over the Moon eyeshadow palette, I'm packing on some of the shade Lava Lamp, which is a sparkly hot pink to give my eyes some definition, but applying it to just my inner half of my lid. I don't know what face I'm doing here, but I must love how the look is going so far. For my brows, I'm using my Eyelil London brow powder with an angled brush. Time to kill those lashes. And of course, I'm going to be using my favourite mascara, Lounge Face Lash by Lauren Curtis. I add a few layers and keep building it up until I'm happy with how it looks. I'm really wanting to explore using false lashes, but I haven't actually had much practice with them and never put them on myself, but I would love to use them to really bring out my looks in some videos in the future. For my lips, I'm using my Bourjois Shine Edition lipstick in the shade 22, which is this lovely and bright hot pink. I've never actually worn hot pink on my eyes or my lips before, so it was definitely a new experience for me. I didn't actually mind how it looked on me. I did need to do a couple layers of the lipstick though to really bring out that colour, so keep that in mind if you're wanting to try this lipstick out. I'm then going over my lips with the Bourjois Effet 3D Lip Gloss in the shade 04 to give my lips a bit more of extra shine and glamour. I think I'm liking how it looks so far. Okay, so this is the side I've been most nervous to do because I don't, I've never had, to, I've never done anything like it before. So I'll start with the face, so they kind of have like a dark shadow contour. So I guess I'll just do that with some eyeshadow. I was so nervous to start this part because I know black is really hard to get right and blend out. To get the effect of a hollow face and cheekbones, I'm using the Morphe and James Charles palette again with the shade Spooky which is the black. I keep looking back at the phone to follow off the photo I had but I found it much harder than I thought it would. People who can do these looks well, I'm so envious. It was all about the blending. I start blending the black around my forehead as well and this is when I really thought I messed it up. But once again, Blend, blend, blend. Blend like your life depends on it. Mm -hmm. 
using a much smaller and thinner eyeshadow brush, I'm using the same black shade at the bottom of my blended out line to try and give my cheekbone more definition and define what is meant to be the bone compared to the shadow. I then did the same on the inner part of my eyebrow and up towards my forehead to start the process of carving out the hollow of my eye socket. And once again, blend it all out. The line across my cheek, I'm trying to blend the shadow down towards my face instead of going up past the line I already drew to try and accentuate the hollows of my cheekbone and try and make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm then going in with a bit more of the black eyeshadow to try and deepen the look of the skull a little bit more. Time for the scary part. I used the same black shade again from my Morphe palette and packed on the colour as much as I could all over my lid. It also doesn't matter too much for this eye look how neat you are with the initial application because you just blend it all out later anyway. It just looks terrifying to begin with. I then create a messy cat eye line with the shadow to get the shape of the eye how I want it before blending it all out. Using the same brush to give a messy look, I applied the black shadow to my bottom lash line to deepen the eyes and make them look more sunken in like an eye socket would. This was the point where I was praying that blending it out like there's no tomorrow would make the look come together better because it honestly looks like at this point I've been punched square in the face. After blending for a good 10 minutes, I go in with my Rimmel London Wonderlink liquid eyeliner to clean up the eye look a little bit better so it didn't look like I had a massive black eye. To get the cat eye shape I want, I've learned the hard way to now lightly trace the outside of the wing until I'm happy with the shape and thickness and then I go and colour it in. To further define my lower lash line, I'm going in with a very thin eyeshadow brush to define my eyes a bit more and to give this look of a not so neat line bottom eye, I'm just using this with the same black eyeshadow from the same palette. And once again, clearly impressing myself with how it's coming along. To get the shape of my nose, I'm using the same thin eyeshadow brush to use the black shade down the bridge of my nose all the way up to my eyebrows and blending it all out. Going in with my same liquid eyeliner, I'm carving out the shape of the bone on my nose and going off the picture I have on my phone to try and get the shape right. Once I get it as close as I can to the photo, I fill it in. I can't say I've ever had eyeliner anywhere on my face besides my eyelids, but colouring my nose in with it was strangely fun. I quickly add some eyeliner to the bottom of my eye because I think I was feeling a little bit adventurous. Being the rookie that I am, I forgot to hit the record button for the start of this. All I did was use the eyeliner and put vertical lines on my lips to create the illusion of teeth with the smile line extending out past my lips. I then began to use a tiny brush to blend the lines out a bit more so they aren't too harsh. I decided to add some black shadow onto the highest points of my cheeks to give the skull more definition and kind of act like a blush. And then just fill in my brows with some black shadow. I'm actually kind of impressed. Like for, it is definitely not great. It's there are so many people who can do so much better than what I've just done. But I'm not, I mean it looks, I mean don't look up close because that's when it turns to shocked. But for a first go at it, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of proud of myself. I think I did alright. I'll just bring it in a bit closer so that you can have a look. I mean, it's a start. It could be worse. <laughs> I'll go take this off, put on some new foundation, ready for the next look. Okay, so for the next look, you can still kind of see with the black around my eye, but it might actually end up coming in handy anyway. So all I've done is just put on my normal foundation, bronzer, contour, and I also contoured my nose and put on a little bit of highlighter. For this one, I'm attempt to do, it's it looks like a vampire look, so it reminds me of the Vampire Diaries, which I am absolutely loving at the moment. So I thought it was only really fitting. So this is the picture I'm gonna try and go off. Starting with the eyes, I'm using the shade Soul Train from my Mecca Max Over the Moon eyeshadow palette and packing this all over my lid and then blending it out around the edges. I bring the shadow right up to my eyebrow and extend it out much more than I would for a regular look. I initially had a bit of trouble deciding which colours to use for this look as the picture appeared to have more of a dark blood red tone but all I had was a bright red or this kind of darker purple colour. 
For my bottom lashes, I wanted it to be very messy and smoked out, so I used the same shade and blended it all out nice and messy. For my lid again, I used the shade Benny, which is a dark brown shade from the Morphe and James Charles palette, and then blend it out to create a smoky eye and begin to create the look of a vampire. After doing some blending, I go in with my L'Oreal Paris Infallible More Than Concealer in the shade Stark Deckened, which is a light concealer that I like to use for under my eyes. I use a tiny bit of this to get a nice crisp line for my eyeshadow to make it easier to apply eyeliner later. I do my eyebrows as I usually would and then go over them in my Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt Gel Mascara to push the hairs up and make them look more bushy and messy. Using my pinky finger, I take the shade Ring Light from the Morphe and James Charles palette to the inner corner of my eyes. I then go in with my Rimmel London eyeliner and create a cat eye wing starting from the very inner corner of my lash line. Not doing a very good job with the camera angles, but I'm trying, we're working on it. Fast forward a step or two, I blended the eyeshadow down my face towards my cheeks in a really messy upside down triangle sort of shape to create the vampire look that you see on Vampire Diaries when they get hungry for blood. If you know, you know. <laughs> Using a very small thin brush, I take the same shade and begin to make very small wavy lines from the bottom of my eyes down towards my cheeks to create veins. Who knew I could do this? Put your hands up if you didn't think I could do this. We're nearly done with this look. I'm so happy with how it's turning out. Like, I just wanna, you know? Damon, where are ya? For lips, what I initially did, I used a bright red, which I wasn't happy with, so I got rid of it, and I decided to go in with this Dealer Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick in the shade Backer, which is a darker plum color. I also wanted to create a fake blood effect dripping from my lips, but at the time of filming this video, I actually didn't have any fake blood. But as I actually edit this video, I do have some, which is a bit annoying because it would have been perfect for this look. I don't have a dark red eyeshadow, so I go in with the same shade from my lids on a very thin brush to create the blood dripping down my face. So this look is now done. I've just added some mascara on. I'm really happy with how it's turned out like. I mean, it's not great. It's not the, like I said with the other one, it's not the best makeup you've seen. But this is my first go at doing something like this and I'm actually really impressed with myself. So let's just pretend to be a vampire real quick. Did I scare you? Okay, so for the third and final look that I'm gonna attempt to try and do, I'm tossing up between doing one that's kind of inspired by a pumpkin, so using some oranges or attempting to do something that looks like it looks like it i think i might try and do the pumpkin one only because i've kind of already played around with the colors of it in that photo because i think those colors were pretty similar to the vampire one so i might have a crack at trying to do a pumpkin inspired one after regular foundation i'm using my hourglass ambient lighting bronzer to bronze up my face and contour a little bit for my eyes, I started to go in with one of my only orange eyeshadows, which is the shade 518 from the Morphe James Charles palette. However, because I didn't have an eyeshadow primer, something that I should get, the colour wasn't really showing up as well as I had hoped. It looks more like a weird off yellow. I tried packing the colour on both eyes with my finger, but it still wasn't getting the colour payoff I was after. I also tried adding a darker orange to the outer corners, but as soon as I tried to blend it out, the brush seemed to just take away the bright colour. I decided to go in with my Fusion Body Art from the Face Paint Shop Australia using the orange shade to try and really make the orange stand out, especially being the main colour for this look. I applied this all over my lid and then used the same face paint and started to paint on the shape I wanted at the end of my nose. Okay, so I've just jumped off camera and used some more of the orange face paint because the eyeshadow was just not working for me. So all I've done is added a little bit of orange on my nose on my cheek, on my lips, and on here to make a smile. I then go in with my liquid eyeliner and trace the outside of the orange shapes on my face to crisp it up and make it look a little bit more neat. I also use the liner to add a little bit more detail to the look. So I'm adding little lines onto my nose to tie in with the look of my lips. I also do the same to my lips to give the effect of teeth, even though pumpkins don't have teeth. 
I add that orange shade from the James Charles Morphe palette around my face to soften it up a little bit and give some more definition. I did my brows how I usually would, but obviously I used a bright red shade from the same palette instead. Not sure why I chose red, but seemed fitting at the time. I applied normal winged eyeliner, curled my lashes and applied mascara. Okay, so here is the finished look. I don't really know what it is, but I had fun doing it. Okay, so I'm just jumping back on because I was just taking off all the makeup and I think I forgot to do an outro for this video. So thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun doing it and I honestly impressed myself with what I could do. I don't actually usually celebrate Halloween, but this honestly is going to probably give me a reason to want to celebrate it just so I can play around with more makeup and see what other looks I can come up with. Let me know down in the comments if you like to celebrate Halloween and if you do, what are you going to dress up as this year? Please also let me know which looks today was your favourite one. Mine would probably definitely have to be the vampire one. I think I just love how it all looked. It all blended really well and I think also because I'm just obsessed with vampire diaries at the moment. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed watching it. And please subscribe to my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. So come join the family and don't forget to put the notification bell on so you don't miss any time I upload. I've also left the link down in the description box where you can also find me on Instagram. I'll see you next time. Bye! It doesn't look as good as the photos I'm gone from.